Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and you are watching week 12 of the 51 Yarns Spin Along. This week is course fun and uh, apologies, this is about a week late. Um, I'm on a week off at the moment so I'm trying to catch up a little bit but there's just been a lot of other stuff going on and it was quite a stressful week last week so I gave myself a little bit of a break but I did course spin some stuff. For those who are new to this series, uh, this is a series of videos that I'm doing which coincides with the 51 Yarn Spin Along that's being run by Ply Magazine. Uh, it's also in conjunction with their book, 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off. And uh, each week I do a video where I do whatever that spin along is. And in this case, it was Cool Spun. Um, I have the sample or samples that I spun here. Um, they were kind of, Kind of hilarious. So I re-watched JC Boggs Faulkner's spin art video class on uh, Interweave. I bought it from Interweave years ago and textured yarns or art yarns are not really something that I spin on a very regular basis. Um, so I hadn't really kind of looked at it for a long time. But the first thing that she said pretty much was uh, when it comes to core spun, you need to put your core yarn through your wheel with a lot of opposite twist. Um, so that when you do the core spinning, you're sending it back to being a balanced yarn, which totally makes sense. So I did that, but I completely failed to put enough opposite twist in. My first sample, which Safi clearly doesn't like. Um, my first sample, it kind of looks like I was trying to ply it. I wasn't. There just wasn't anywhere near enough opposite twist put into this one. And uh, in that video, JC specifically says, don't worry about which direction the yarn was previously plied in or pre the previous lot of twist was put in. Just worry about which way you're going to end up doing the core spinning. Um, and put in twist that is opposite to that. So I did that at probably about 12 o'clock on the mini spinners control dial initially. Um, and this is what happens if I let it go. Yeah, there's a whole ton of too much twist in there. So that was my first sample. My second one, I put the same yarn back through the wheel, putting more opposite twist in. So I set it up to um, three o'clock on the mini spinner dial. And this is better, but there's still way too much twist. So uh, it, it looks pretty decent, but when you let go of it, yeah, there's still quite a lot of twist in there. So this is going to be my third attempt that I will actually show you on camera. And I've now put this lot through twice at three o'clock. So hopefully <laughs> there will be enough opposite twist in there. We'll see. So the fibre that I was using was a combination of this pink stuff um, and also some sari silk. I bought the sari silk at Wonderwool. Um, in April and I just kind of carded that in. This is already carded. I think this was a dyeing disaster. I did some dyeing and it just wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. Um, so I kind of use this as scrap yarn whenever I just need something to spin to show techniques. Uh, so I was using this and because it's only a sample and I didn't want to do a huge amount of it, I just broke out the hand cards and almost just kind of used it as a blending board. So I was literally just kind of laying some fibers on here. And because I'm using it as a blending board, I can afford to put it quite far down into the tines and then just lay some sari silk on over the top of it. 
I discovered that I liked having quite a lot of sari silk because it kind of, uh, as you start spinning it, you realise that there's not as much as you thought there was. So <laughs> I'm going to try and put a fair amount of sari silk into this one. So that was pretty much what I was using. Um, you could actually then just spin it directly off here or you could card it and kind of take it off in sections. I just literally kind of pulled a little section off and I just spin from that. Because it's already carded, I'm not too worried about it actually holding together. So I'm using my Acreworks Lazy Kate and I only need one um, shaft up on this one because I don't need to use very much of it. I've still got the core yarn with the opposite twist on the bobbin on here. This was just Noro. Um, I think it's Noro Silk Garden Light, maybe. Uh, I found it quite good from a sort of grabbiness point of view. It was quite grabby and the, the fibre seemed to kind of stick onto it pretty nicely. So I'm going to continue with that. So I'm going to swap onto a new bobbin. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. I've got my core yarn over here with the opposite twist already in it. I've got my fibre already carded. Uh, the mini spinner, I've set the dial down to about nine o'clock, which is fairly slow. From the samples that I've done so far, I know that I don't need very much um, twist going in there very quickly because I need time to actually manipulate the, the core and the fibre that's wrapping around it. So yeah, I think I'm ready to go. I'm operating off the battery today, so I'm just going to press the button on the battery to activate it and then wait for a couple of green flashes on the wheel. So I took the twist out of my core yarn with um, counterclockwise twist. And so I'm spinning my yarn with clockwise twist, which should in theory send it back to being a balanced yarn. We'll see. So then I'm just gonna catch my fibers on. Like I say, it is pretty grabby, which is nice. And I'm just gonna uh, pinch and kind of pull sideways on the fiber. I think I might even slow this wheel down a little bit more because I'm not really, I don't really feel like I'm having time to get the fibre to catch on properly and I'm leaving gaps on here. So yeah, I'm going to slow that right the way down. There we go, that's a little bit better. I still feel like I'm having to work pretty close to the orifice, um, which possibly just says that I have too much brake twist on. So I'm gonna take that off a little bit. It was kind of interesting this week having discussions with people on Instagram about cool spun yarns. Um, quite a lot of, Quite a lot of people saying that, you know, they they don't really do core spun yarn and they don't really do art yarns at all, which I'm kind of on board with that. You know, I'm, I'm the same. I don't really do a lot in the way of um, textured yarns or art yarns because I have this principle of trying to actually spin yarns that I know I will use and I don't think I would actually use um, core spun yarns or textured yarns generally. I don't think I would use it very much. So hence why I don't do a lot of this kind of spinning. You know, I just feel like if it's not something that I'm going to use, then why would I bother spending the time spinning it? But at the same time, when it comes to things like this, I think it's a useful technique to know. And I'm kind of into the idea of just, you know, knowing how to spin yarns, even if they're not actually things that you would use on a regular basis. I think it's useful to know how to spin them. So 
that's my aim really with this whole series is you know these might not be yarns that I spin frequently but I want to know how to spin them and I want to get the technique down. Okay, I feel like this is going better, but even now I still feel like I could slow down quite a lot more. There is still quite a lot of um, little ringlet action happening. So I'm gonna try and prevent that. I had tried core spun at some point before, um, quite a long time ago now. The problem that I found was that I would get a, a core that would kind of move up and down within the fiber. So, you know, I'd, I'd have my fiber wrapping around it, but it would kind of move up and down. So it wasn't particularly stable. And I think re-watching that spin art video kind of gave me some pointers on how I could stop that from happening. Hopefully this will be a little bit better Certainly the samples that I did, even though they were vastly over twisted, I could definitely see a huge improvement in terms of, um, you know, how the, the yarn was actually sort of holding together, how the outer fibre was sticking to the core a lot better. So, yeah, hopefully this will be a better yarn. Um, I still feel like this is massively over twisted. So there's another technique that I might try when I've finished this, because obviously if I've got very over twisted yarn, a solution might be to choose to ply it with thread or something else so that I can balance the twist out in the yarn again. I might in a moment just try and blend my sorry silk in a bit better with my fibers because it's just currently coming out in little blobs every so often in the yarn so we'll see I don't mind the blobs actually they're quite nice but it's not really what I was aiming for um, yeah Dexter managed to knock the hand carders onto the floor so <laughs> Let's, let's see if I can just card this just so that it's a little bit more mixed up. I think that would possibly work better. As I said at the beginning, if I was doing a larger quantity, then I would just use my drum carder. But as it is, this works well. I don't own a blending board. I've never really felt like I needed one. Um, if I did more coarse spun yarn, then I probably would end up with a blending board because I think it would be quite useful for smaller quantities. Um, so if I was sampling this a lot, then I might choose to have a blending board, but Core spun is definitely one of those yarns which I don't feel I need to do very frequently because it's just not something that I would use. And for any of you who've watched any of my podcast episodes, you will know that I'm kind of into the idea of just spinning things that I will actually use. Um, I tend to try and be quite intentional with the spinning that I do because... Otherwise, I just feel like you get tons and tons and tons of yarn that you're not going to use. And actually, if you're a spinner and your whole point of spinning is to spin to knit, then what's the point in having lots of yarn hanging around that you're not going to use? So what I'm doing with my hands is basically the, uh, the left hand is pinching at the point where the outer fibre is twisting around the core. And then I'm just kind of drawing sideways off that at something between about 70 and 90 degrees, roughly. 
again, the spin art video is a very, very good resource if you're looking for more information on how to do this. And you can see from this why these yarns are so over twisted with me because it's taken me so long to do this sideways drafting malarkey that it's um, all the twist is just building up and building up and building up. I try to redistribute it, but let's be honest, there's just too much twist there to redistribute very easily. So I think what I might do is try to spiral ply this with some thread or something just to um, get it back to being a balanced yarn and then that will kind of even out the extra twist. I feel like there's even more extra twist in this than there was in the previous samples which is kind of disappointing but there you go. Okay so I have just finished spinning my bobbin of cool spun yarn. One thing that I started to find a little bit easier was instead of pinching with the tip of my thumb, just pinching with the side and trying to pinch it against two fingers underneath because that gave me a, a larger amount of fibre that I was able to wrap around at any one point. That was quite useful. Um, I also took my orifice reducer off because I realised that obviously once there's fibre wrapped around that, there's not very much room for it to go through the orifice. So I just kind of had that hanging down at the side, um, which the cats are now going to get interested in. I knew, yes, yes, it's a fun thing, isn't it? It's a fun thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Is it a fun thing, Saf? Whee! Lots of fun. Oh, and Dexter wants to go now as well. <laughs> Is that fun? Yeah, you got your claw stuck, didn't you? There is almost certainly still too much twist in it. What do you think? Is there too much twist? Um, so I think I am going to try that technique of wrapping it in thread. So putting some opposite twist in, plying it with the thread, just to kind of see what happens. Let's find out. So this is a new technique for me. I haven't tried this before. I'm gonna give it a go, just because I think it might be the only way of saving <laughs> my core spun and actually kind of making it usable in some way. So just to clarify, I took my core yarn, I put some twist in that in the anti-clockwise direction. I then spun my core spun yarn clockwise and now I'm going to ply it anti-clockwise with some thread. I was kind of hoping that I had some purple thread but I don't so I'm just going to go for a kind of dark teal just so that it shows up really it's not necessarily to actually color match it with anything that's going on in the yarn and this is just bog standard sewing thread i'm just going to keep it in my lap here so i can hopefully control it a little bit Oh, see, I quite like this. This looks quite nice. I have no particular rhyme or reason whatsoever in the way that I'm plying it or the twist angle or any of that stuff. I'm just plying it and seeing what happens. Um, and this is kind of inspired by the person who won the uh, year's subscription this week. Uh, apologies, I don't know your name, but uh, I saw the photo and initially I was kind of like, that just looks like spiral plied to me and I was trying to figure out, you know, what the, the technical difference was between the two. I don't think it matters because it looked pretty, but I was, uh, I was kind of interested just to find out really. So yeah, this is kind of inspired by that person, whoever you are. I 
kind of want to see what happens if you just kind of let it auto wrap. And you could even do a coiled yarn because it should be quite easy to push up. I'm just trying to kind of manually regulate how much opposite twist I'm putting in because there are sections of this core spun that are very, very, very highly twisted. And then depending on where I've made adjustments to the tension or to the speed, they get less twisted. Um, one of the things that I did find when I was actually spinning the core spun was I did need a, a reasonably significant amount of twist to actually get the outer fiber to catch on properly. So I was kind of playing around with the speed a little bit and the tension. Yeah, this is this is almost certainly a yarn that I would never use in a million years, but it's kind of fun and I quite like it. It looks kind of cool. And there we go, that is definitely an interesting bobbin. Um, I'm glad I tried that technique because I think it's, um, it's produced an interesting yarn. Like I say, not something that I would ever really see myself knitting with, but it's kind of an interesting little bobbin that I've got going on there. What I'll do is I'll just wind this onto a little niddy noddy, sample niddy noddy, and you can see what it looks like a little bit better. And I can't honestly remember whether there is a spiral ply um, week for 51 yarns, but if there is, I will be happy to try it again. If there isn't, then I'm glad I tried this now. So that is my finished skein. There is a tiny bit of extra twist in there, but only about half a twist. So I'm quite happy with that. I think it will probably actually, once I've finished the yarn, once I've sort of blocked it, then I think that extra twist will actually come out. I'm glad I tried it. I think it's really interesting to try to see if there is something that you can do to salvage it because you will learn from it. So the next time that I core spin something, I will know that I need to put really, really significant amounts of extra twist into my core yarn. Um, but hey, it, as it's something that is really just a sample, then let me just do something that at least makes this yarn usable and I can go from there. So there we go, that is my little sample of core spun yarn. Not something I'm probably ever going to do anything with, I might knit a swatch up out, out of this one, but apart from that, not really something that I would yet ever use, but fun to try it and useful to get some notes about things that I would do differently next time. Learn from your mistakes, that's what we're here to do. So I hope that this was useful for you. Again, apologies that I didn't actually get it done during the week 12 of the spin along. Um, things were just too stressful, hectic. I had a lot of other stuff that I needed to do. It's also been really, really nice weather. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't just sit inside making videos all week. And I did some boring stuff like, you know, cleaning my windows and finally getting all the little specks of paint off the windows that have been driving me mental since I bought this house. Um, I finally just got a paint scraper and chiseled it off the windows, which makes me really happy because I have a great view out of this window and uh, the little specks of paint were driving me mental. So now those have gone and it's really nice. So yeah, there we go. That is course fun. Um, just to see my samples together. So that was my original course fun, which interestingly, I actually feel like this as a course fun was more successful because 
when I was spinning this one, I felt like the fibre wasn't grabbing on as much, which I think was to do with the speed that I had it set to because I was really conscious not to over twist it. I think I had this on a lower um, speed and the fibre just doesn't grab on as well when it's at a slower speed, I found. Experiment, find your own uh, conclusions. But then, um, yeah, making this into something vaguely usable, I'm quite happy with. So those are my two samples from Course Fun Week. Next week, or rather this week in my actual filming world, is 3ply. I feel like I've already talked about 3ply quite a lot in my default yarn video, but I will think about some stuff that I want to talk about and I will see you next week. In the meantime, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Um, hope this was useful and I will see you again next week.